CNC table can be a game changer for making clean cuts and parts, but not every shop is set up with the space to have one until now. Welcome to Weld, where each week we explore different pathways available in the welding industry. I'm your host, Bo Wigington. This week, we're back out at Fabtech, and we head over to the CN Seamless booth to chat with two of the founders, Sam Markham and Josh Cooper, about how an idea and class project turned into a full-blown business. We talk about where the idea came from and how viral reels and social media help skyrocket the growth of their company. We dive in right now. Do you guys want to go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience just in case they're not familiar with you and what you do? Right on. So I'm Josh Cooper. I'm the CEO of CN Seamless. Uh, I'm Sam. I started the company with Josh and DOO. I run the day-to-day operations of the business. We make portable CNC machines in Raleigh, North Carolina that do oxyfuel and plasma cutting for a whole lot of heavy industries. You, we got to hear the origin story. So it was actually three of us. There's a third founder here, Dario. It's running the booth, making sure that we're closing sales here at the show while we got the podcast going on. Go, go. But essentially... Uh, We all had a class at NC State. We were in a senior design entrepreneurship course, and that's how the three of us met originally. Uh, So this is all a senior design class project that we got to pick an idea. And Sam was the guy that came out with the original problem. So I'll let him explain kind of where that came from. Yeah, so the summer before the class started, uh, I worked at Cordell Petersburg uh, in the melt shop, doing like the maintenance department stuff. What's a melt shop? It's like melting down scrap metal. Okay, so that's where the the melting idea, the oxyfuel came from. You know, the molten steel kind of breaks literally everything all the time. So there were a bunch of guys just kind of every day cutting out parts with a hand torch, you know, really big parts, like as big as this table. And, uh, you know, pr- pretty well-paid millwright sitting there cutting out parts by hand kind of felt like not the best use of his time. So, I mean, no disrespect by it, but you guys are young. And yeah. being able to come into it like fresh out of school, you had an idea and it was a class project that evolved into a business. We had no idea what portable CNC machines were until we decided to make the Mach 1. That's really inspiring, honestly. I mean, not knowing what you want to do and then you just kind of stumble into it. I think a lot of people say that they've found success just stumbling into it by accident. Making a product like this is a lot easier than making even just like a consumer like piece of plastic because these parts are mostly machine shop made. So we didn't have to invest in tooling. We could mostly buy off the shelf motors and valves and all that stuff and then shell out money for custom machine parts. But until we really started to scale production, there really wasn't much upfront cost. It was pretty easy for us to do as a business pretty young. The sweat equity is basically me, Sam, and Dario. We're all the engineers behind it. We didn't have to outsource design, which is a huge cost for businesses. So the fact that we did all mechanical, electrical, and software, kind of multidisciplinary, that's kind of how it came all about pretty cheap. What were some of the biggest hangups you had when you were developing the first one? Mechanical design is, is tricky. Making it reliable is hard to do, but making it so you don't have to see a single line of G code while you're using it is, you know, that was the that was the tricky part. Putting the buttons in the right spot, doing all that. I mean, that's a big part of any design for a product is research, and our research was talking to people that were around us that were in steel fabrication, and more likely was looking at YouTube videos, watching how the guys use not a hand torch. That's really all our machine is doing is it acts like a hand torch that moves the way you tell it. So the hard part being the software, making that easy to use, but the you know physics behind it, you can research all that online, how it needs to work, so. So like testing of the product, like how did you go about getting it in people's hands? We actually just refined the product to a point that we could actually sell something. We didn't try to, we just got it to like 80%, I would say completion. So right, right now it's probably at like 98% completion as is. Hey, we're getting close. We're getting close. I don't think it'll ever be 100. There's always software ideas to come up with, but. Uh, we got it to a, a, like maybe even 70% done. And then we sold a th- first data units to some companies in our area and kind of just relied on them for feedback. And then pretty much just doing live demonstrations was like the main thing for us going out and calling people, showing them what it does, pulling up to their job site. I think I was driving a Chrysler 300 at the time with oxy fuel <laughs> bottles in the mini. I had a Home Depot bucket with my you know ported torch set in it. And uh, and showing them how does it, how it works and me trying to explain it myself, that's how we got a ton of our feedback early on. I just picture you pulling up on like a shipyard in a Chrysler 300 with like big sunglass and like popping trunk and just pulling out this big suitcase and be like, let me show you how to work easier. Yeah, we didn't get into any shipyards for a little while. <laughs> we, we had to have a service truck for that one. Well, a lot of it's caught a lot of wind here on social media, right? Uh, I mean, it's a pretty revolutionary product. I like the tablet. It's very user-friendly uh, once you get a hold of it. Uh, 
it has a lot more features than just beats the eye. So I was able to play with a couple of the basic stuff on like what a hand torch would do. Uh, but it is really user friendly being able to just casually put it where you want and then it does what you ask. That's really neat. How many revolutions of it did you have to make to get to where it's at now? And then you've got a new head on it now that bevels in cuts, which is pretty sick. So I'd say we're probably on iteration of the mechanical design, probably version number six or seven. As far as the software updates, that's a, a whole other aspect that I couldn't even wrap my head around. But when it comes to mechanical stuff, what did you learn on the very end, like on the torch setup, on the heads and the different tips? And like, like I know you told me there was a pain point at there at one point. Right, so we used to sell the oxyfuel attachment, and you'll see in some of our older videos, was a Harris-style torch that we bought replacement parts for a Harris head. And then we had a local company braze that on to our arm, and we sold an oxyfuel attachment separately from you know, plasma kit. Right now, we have, thankfully, we were showing that last year at Fabtech, and Kawiki Aronson came by, all right. and we got to you know, connect with them and ended up working with them to get our torches. So now all of our oxyfuel attachments come with the Weekly torch. What is the feedback you've been getting from people that are trying it out in the field? I put my business card in all the cases and then I just get a phone call from people and <laughs> they'll ask me questions and I'll get them FaceTime a lot and just see what they're doing and help them do their first couple cuts and then you kind of to, tapers off from you there. You have to train a welder how to use technology. Uh, I think the, the fact that they can independently sometimes just figure it out on site and make parts and not have to call us to anything off rep. I mean, it's been awesome. All industries. That was my goal when you put it in my hands. I didn't want to call anyone. I wanted to figure it out or break it. <laughs> it's like, I'll see how, the, how user-friendly this thing really is. And really just to get a cut and get a hole going on quarter inch, half inch, whole inch. Like, you can, it was pretty, pretty easy. Just point and shoot. For people like me that have never had hands-on experience, like, what, if it shows up at my door, what is the step-by-step? -step, where do I go? Like, walk me through it like I have zero idea sure. how to use it. Uh, step one is plug it into the power in the wall. And so a little condescending. <laughs> you press a button on the back that it mounts it to the plate, essentially. You connect your tablet to the machine. So click Wi-Fi, connect it to the Wi-Fi that's hosted by the machine. Uh, and then you've got four steps in the software itself to go from nothing to running a cut. So design is where you would either do a point-to-point -point trace. So you move the torch to different points on a path that you want to cut. And you just move the torch, enter point, move it, enter point, et cetera. Uh, you can add shapes from our shape generator library. So click add shape plus minus diameter to make a bigger or smaller shape uh, or load a DXF. That's all in the step one designs, so kind of pick your poison there. Uh, and then step two, place it on the material. So you move the torch to the origin point where you want the cut to start. And you say, put my design down on the plate there and then that's step two. Step three is materials. Tell it what thickness you're cutting, what material it is, and what torch tip you've got installed. And then step four is click run, light the torch, and let it move to that direction and start cutting. When you pick your material and the thickness and everything, you already have travel speed built in? That's right. Yeah, it comes preloaded, you know, based on what thickness you're cutting and you know, what plasma cutter or what torch tip you're using. So. Okay, what's next? The next thing is more attachments. Okay. So right now we've got the oxyfuel and the plasma attachments. We're debuting our beveling attachment right now. It's going to be a different arm that pops on and lets the torch rotate at a certain angle so you can bevel, not just a straight line, but circles, arcs, complicated profiles. And that's all going to be backwards compatible with the Mach 1. And we kind of want to keep it that way for a while until we have enough attachments with the Mach 1 that we design it and build it out to the system that we want it to be, which is portable automation, Anything you need in the field, it can do. That's the goal. And it's just so cool to think that you can just walk up, stick that thing on the side or upside down or wherever, and then you can put a nice beveled hole for a nozzle or for just the side of an edge of a plate. And boy, it'd be really nice to set something up just to make it perfect so I don't have to spend so much time grinding. Long way from perfect. It's a, <laughs> We got about probably six months is what we're shooting for, at least for re releasing it. But the mechanical part works good. Now it's all about software, about software getting yeah. it up. Do you have... Big plans that you want to expand into one day, or do you guys think you're going to still stick with this? Like, this is for the people out in the field. You could put this in your truck. It's not like a massive machine. So we've got a lot of other products for like the field welding application stuff. So the next whole different product besides this one is going to be our lancing machine to lance pins out. Um, this is basically a feeder for a normal oxy lance. Just pushes it straight through. We got a pin over there with a good hole in it. So we're going to make that. Um, hopefully, 
I, I don't even want to give a timeline on that, but we're gonna make in that machine. And then we're also gonna make a beam crawler. So if you are a shop that doesn't need a full beam line, drill line, um, just crawls along the beam, drills holes, cuts holes, and does all your coping without having to have their whole stationary machine. And then lots of other products as well. People will give us ideas. We want to get really good at this niche of portable fabrication, easy to use software for welders and fabricators. And once we really become elite at that, I think there's just a plethora of other products and things that we can come up with. And frankly, all those ideas are from our customers. And so the fact that we are the ones doing the demos, we get ideas, people are like, hey, can you solve this problem? Can you do that? I just think there's an unlimited amount of ideas out there that we can help out with welders and fabricators. What's your problem solving for different metals now? So if you had to cut on some aluminum or some stainless, I know you got plasma, but how do you hook that thing up? We got a vacuum suction attachment. Oh, see, you didn't even say that. You yep. kept that in your back pocket. <laughs> they got yep. vacuums. Yeah, we got a big pipe magnet base. You can mount it to a you know, pipe. Got you know other permanent magnets. Oh, yeah, you have material. one with a little bit of like some angles so that you can match the same radius of the outside diameter of the pipe. Yep. yep. That's, that's brilliant. I mean, you're just coming up with the little, little things that make your life easier, right? That's right. When you were at school... You know, like when you developed this idea and everything, like, did y'all have any kind of background in any kind of fabrication? I mean, my, I guess, side hustle in college was I repaired like trailers and small engines and stuff. So I had a, a shop in the house I lived in in college. As far as jobs, like I'd been interns at places and construction and like steel mill and stuff like that. But and I was a button pusher in a machine shop, pressing the green button to cycle start a bunch okay. of times, but yeah. not too much. Everything I know is from on-the-job demos, CNC, most of I was green. What has social media done for you guys since last year? Man, last year we met Isaac Icy Weld at Fabtech, and that's when we first saw like getting his stamp of approval, like, hey, this is really cool, I want to try this. That was what really shifted the tides for our social media. Um, even just being here would have never had that happen. But since then, I mean, we went from having 500 followers total in December of last year to now we've got over 100,000 on you know TikTok, Instagram, Facebook combined. Uh, so, I mean, it's just the fact that there's so many people from different industries, like all of those people watching our videos are certainly not potential buyers, especially at the price point we're at. But just the, the word of it getting out and people saying, man, I, I can see that application and now I can start thinking how I could use this machine for the upside down cutting or vertical or a beam, whatever it is. And it's just... I think the, the fact that our social media has been based on real world applications for the most part, it's just our customers thankfully sending us videos and John Johnson sending us videos, showing the machine in practice. It's like, I mean, there's no telling how you know, different our business would look today if we hadn't you know, gone through the social media route. If someone wants to pick one up, right? Like if I want to buy one, where do I go? Can I go, is it just through your website or do you have like distributors yet? Yep, we're so we, you can buy it direct through our website. Uh, we also have a number of distributors that you know rep our product and have it on their web stores. Um, so like, you got Arc Three Gases, Banditos, Earl Beck Gas and Technologies, um, a bunch of the local chains, and then we even we do sell through Air Gas and Lindy. Uh, we have accounts set up with them, so you can find it at most distributors. Um, more often than not, you're going to end up talking to one of us at some point with the software question. So uh, it doesn't it's six to one to us, but we do sell them through our website. Can you keep up making them with the amount of orders? We had uh, two guys. Me and Sam were the only ones that were full-time this time last year. Now we've got seven on our team in Raleigh. So now we actually have dedicated production personnel putting together the machines and ordering enough ahead of time, working with vendors. So it's uh, we're starting to catch up. It feels like every time we're like, okay, we're going to build enough machines this week. That's the week we have even more sales than we had, you know previously thought. So we're catching up. I think usually we try to keep it within the three to five week lead time, but that's... Yeah, you know, even for a production machinery like this, that's not too bad. Mechanical engineering was your degree, right? But now you're running a business. So, like, how how did you make that transition? How did you start learning all these logistics? You know, a lot of it's just kind of been as it comes. You know, people send us forms and like, I have no idea what that number is. Let's, let's go <laughs> go get one. Go check it out. Um, QuickBooks tutorials on uh, YouTube. Yes. Watch a lot of those. Um, it was a couple of years like before we sold machines. So that was a good enough time for us to kind of start figuring out how to run a business. And then once it took off, it's been, it's been tricky, but we keep a handle on it. So. Yeah, all, all three of us founders are engineers by trade and we did the design for the Mach 1, but we've all kind of segmented into different parts of the business. So like I handle most of the sales and marketing, Sam's on finance, Dario kind of just, you know, service and, you know, keeping up with the, kind of all the admin that goes around with it. So we split it up. It's really nice to have a founding team of three. 
And then, like Sam said, it's a lot of learn on the job. Like, once someone says, oh, I'm interested and they want to cut a sale and they ask for, like, can they put a purchase order in? We didn't probably didn't even know what that was when they, we first got one. So just trying to figure it out, Google, and, you know, hope that our customers trust us as we go. So if people want to learn more, they want to reach out to you, they want to just see all your products, where can they find everything? So everything is on YouTube. If you look up CN Seamless, that's uh, that's kind of where all our training videos are. That's how all the applications, things like that. And then our website's definitely linked on there. It's CN Seamless.com. Um, but uh, we actually respond to our contact form. So anytime someone puts a query in, I'm usually emailing them within you know 30 minutes or an hour and saying, hey, you know, thanks for putting a message in, giving me answers, I'm good to go. So um, definitely the website, or I mean, they can reach out on Instagram, social media, wherever, or you can even drop my link to my email below. They can reach out direct to me. Is this your first Fabtech ever? Second. We were here last year. Okay. This year, we've had a ton of traffic just coming through and saying, okay, I've seen you guys online. Uh, takes You got to see it in person to believe it. So a lot of people that are like, I got to get my eyes on this machine. Show me how the software works. We have a 10 by 20 booth this year. Last year, we had a little 10 by 10. So, um, so far, so good. And it's, you know, just the upwards trajectory is really awesome to see. So what has been kind of like the biggest feedback you've had this year at the show? People really want to bevel stuff. Be honest. Like uh, we have this uh, the beveling attachment that's still a prototype, but uh, getting lots of questions about that. So Got to get that CJB, babe. And then you know all the all the software stuff. Like we've we've gotten there right now. What we think is good and what people have told us so far. But every time someone comes up and tells us their application, like you know maybe we should be able to do that. Let's let's put that on the list of things to add. So what are some of those things that they're saying? Do shape templates like. Parts that I didn't know existed. They're like, oh, we need to make a lot of these. Can you make it so we gussets, have to play that? Big gussets. Oh, blade. yeah. Four types of gussets. Fish fish blade. Blade. Lots of fish blade. And then there's a lot of like minor comments with like the overall software. Like, oh, like after your program runs, I want it to return to home. So when I throw in another piece of angle, it's just going to run the same program. Just kind of making it more automated. So there's always features like that that are like kind of just nice to have. Like, I just want to do this or this. And it's just minor things that there's a thousand of them that we probably want to add. But you know, it takes time and we got to test them before we release them. Well, that's awesome. I mean, I've learned a lot. I know Austin had a lot of fun playing with it and I can't wait to see where it goes. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Weld and thank you Sam and Josh and everyone on the CN Seamless team for having us out to the booth and talking to us about your journey. It was awesome to hear. And next time I'm down in Raleigh, I guess I'll just have to pop by the shop. If you want a demo of their product or want more info, check the show notes below for their website where you can book a demo or learn anything you want about all their different products. I just want to say again, I appreciate everyone who tunes in. I hope that you're getting as much out of these conversations as I am. And until next time, we'll see you out there.